Hello everyone, my name is Jonathan with Driving Academy. In today's video, we're gonna give you a breakdown of exactly how the air brake system works. That's right, in 2023 update on how the air brake system in a tractor trailer actually works. So at the end of this video, my intention is to make sure that you guys have a better understanding of how the entire air brake system works of a tractor trailer, uh, CDL vehicle in general, and to help you out when it comes to passing the written exam for your air brake endorsement. So in order to actually get a CDL license, there's pretty much a two-step process. Step number one, you first have to pass a few different written tests to get yourself a CDL permit. Step number two, you're gonna have to pass a two and a half hour long road test to get your actual license. So this step is going to help you out with that step number one, which one of the written tests that you have to pass is air brakes. So let's go right into it and let me show you exactly how this whole thing operates. If you like st stuff like this, make sure you comment below, subscribe, and share so we can help out a million people get on the road to freedom. Let's get right into it. So this diagram looks like a bunch of gibberish to you currently, I'm sure. The first thing we're going to talk about is going to be the engine. That is going to be the heartbeat of the entire vehicle itself because that's the first part that we're going to talk about. The engine does more than just move the vehicle forward. It's actually the power source for a lot of other things that happen on inside the vehicle. But since we're talking about the air brake section itself, Let's talk about that in particular. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is this box right over here, which is considered the compressor. So the air compressor is gonna be inside of your engine or your motor. And the thing that you have to understand here is as soon as long as the engine is on, the air compressor can be on as well. The faster the engine goes, which means the higher the RPMs, the faster the compressor can run. The compressor has one job and one job only. That one job for the compressor is to compress air into the air tanks or to pump air into the air tanks itself. So as you can see from this diagram here, the air compressor is gonna be run by the, um, is gonna be run by the motor and then it's gonna pump air into these air tanks here. This is an example of three different air tanks inside of here. Now, before we start getting into too much detail, let's talk about this piece right over here, which is the governor. The governor sits on top of the air compressor and the governor's job is to govern, just like the governor of a uh, state, right? So the governor's job is to tell the air compressor when to turn on and when to turn off. That's his only job whatsoever. So how does the governor actually know when to turn the air compressor on and when to turn the air compressor off? And that's based on how much air is in the air tanks. So these are air tanks right here. And once the air goes into the air tanks, there's a reading on the air pressure gauge or the air supply gauge. Now this air supply gauge is gonna be something that's found inside of your dashboard. So when you're inside the truck itself, the dash that you see with all of your gauges, the air gauge is a super important gauge to talk about uh, when that actually does happen. So there's gonna be a whole bunch of numbers on this air gauge, kind of like your speedometer itself, right? So it's gonna look exactly the same way. And this is what one looks like in real life if, you, if, you don't, if you've never seen one before. And this is gonna tell you how much air is inside of your air tanks. Now that's very important. The air gauge only tells you how much air is inside of your air tanks. It does not tell you how much air is inside the entire braking system. Because from the air tanks, the air, there's a whole bunch of hoses that go out through all the brake chambers and all the different braking components of the engine. But the air gauge doesn't know how much air is inside all of those hoses. It just knows what's inside the air tanks. So that's why it's connected from the air tank to the air gauge itself. So back to this governor, this boss, this boss that's gonna tell the compressor when to go to work, when not to go to work, kinda like a girlfriend at home, right? So that being said, let's talk about this. So the first thing is going to be um, 120 PSI. Once you get to 120 on some vehicles, up to 145 PSI, then the air tanks are gonna be considered full. When the air tanks are full, the governor is gonna tell the compressor, yo, we're full, stop working. There's no need to continue to work because all you're doing is wasting energy and wasting fuel. So what's actually gonna happen is, hey, we're fuel. You're gonna hear a little sneeze coming out of the air tanks itself because there's a release valve in there where it, once it gets to a certain point, it's gonna sneeze out the ex excess pressure to make sure that those air tanks don't explode, right? Because imagine if the governor wasn't working and there was no way for that air to escape by any kind of valve, the compressor would keep pumping air, keep pumping air, keep pumping air until oh, big explosion, just like the effect showed right there, right? So that being said, to avoid the explosion, they have a release valve inside there and that's where you hear that tss at the end of the air tanks being full, right? So. Once the air pressure starts to drop, then 
once it gets to 100 PSI, then the governor says, yo, time to get back to work, compressor. And that's when that compressor kick, kicks back in. So those are the main two things. If it's at 120, that means the air tank is full. And if it drops down to 100 or less, that means the governor is going to tell the compressor, yo, kick everything back on. So now your next question is probably going to be like, yo, John, how do I actually lose air pressure? So before we actually get into that, let's talk about what the air actually does in the braking system. The first thing I want you guys to understand is very simple term. I'm going to super simplify it for you. The first thing that you have to understand is if air is in the system, that means the brakes are, can be released and you can move the vehicle. If you have no air, that means no move. You cannot move. Just that simple. Keep that in mind throughout this entire training that we're going to be going through right now. So with air, that means you can move. No air means you can't move. So how do you use air? How does air actually drop? So every time you actually use your brakes, you're actually losing air. That's right. So what actually happens is the air pressure uh, starts off in the compressor, moves into the air tanks. Air tanks is just a holding uh, tank uh, that's no, that does nothing else but just hold the air inside there. Now, every time you push in your parking brakes in a tractor trailer, you're going to have two parking brakes right over here, a yellow and a red, just like you see in the picture. And once you push those in, what's actually happening is the air is leaving out of the tanks and going into the different brake chambers and different brake hoses and air lines. Now, we'll do a different video on exactly what happens there, but these are your two air brake uh, things right over here, right? So once you push those in, you're releasing the brakes because you're pushing air into the system, which means you can move. Air in means you can move. When you pull these things out, that means you're pulling air out of the system. No air, that means no move. That's the first thing to do. And no, it gets kind of tricky. Release means you're pushing in. Uh, uh, actually applied means you're pulling the brakes out. So very, very important that you understand that part. So now we're pushing the brakes in. Air is leaving the tanks and it's going to fill up all the airlines and brake hoses and brake chambers, right? So what did I say the air gauge actually tracks? The air gauge only tracks the air that's inside of the air tanks. So once it leaves the tanks, you're actually going to get the air tank, uh, your air gauge is going to show that you lost pressure because it's no longer in the tanks, right? Pretty simple. Now, that's one way you can lose air out of your air tank. Way number two that you can lose air out of your air tank is every time you press on the foot brake. So when you're pressing on the foot brake, it's actually moving air out of the out of the air tanks and pushing it through the brakes brake system itself, which means you're also losing more air pressure on the on the supply gauge, right? So that means when the, if, say you press on the brake a little bit too many times, you are actually going to make sh reduce everything uh, a lot, and then that's when the governor has to tell the air compressor to kick everything back in. I hope this is all making sense so far. If you do have any questions, make sure you put in the comments below so we can actually have another video. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share this channel. We're here to help a million people get on the road to freedom, and we're almost at 100,000 subscribers, so help us get there super fast. All right, so let's get back to the homework part. So I hope you understand how air gets into the, into the system and out of the system. Now, let's talk about the actual air brake test itself. So the thing that you have to understand is that the air brake test is going to check for the third possible reason why you will lose air pressure. So I already gave you two reasons why this air gauge will drop. The third possible reason is that you actually have an air leak in the system itself. So before you do anything throughout your day, once you actually, before you start and you are a full official truck driver, you have to be performing an air brake test regularly. By regularly, I mean every single day. Because if you do not have air in the system, what does that mean? You cannot move. Which means if you want to be able to move, you have to make sure there's no leaks and you want to make sure that everything's running smoothly. So let's talk about the actual air brake test itself to kind of show you what everything's going on. So the first thing in the air brake test is we're going to turn the, the, do a safe start, which means turn the key to the on position, let all the gauges work, make sure the parking brakes are applied, make sure the vehicle is in neutral. Second step is we're then going to turn the engine all the way on. Remember what I said, when we turn on the engine, it turns everything that's attached to the engine, which is the air compressor. So the air compressor is going to start working. That's the first test that we're going to have. How do we know it's working? That the air pressure gauge is going to start filling up to 120 PSI. Once it fills up to 120 PSI to 145, you're going to hear a sneeze coming out. Now, once you hear the sneeze, 
That's good. You're then going to shut the engine off. The reason why we shut the engine off is we want to make sure that we can check the system without the air compressor on. A very simple analogy I say is I, if I give you a, a balloon just like this, but you deflate it, so it's one that looks just like this, and I give it to you and I say, hey, find out if it has a hole in it. The only way to do that is to actually put air into the balloon to see if air is coming out, right? And that's how we know if it has a hole. That's the same thing we're going to do with the braking system itself. However, if it has a very small hole and you keep pumping air into it through your mouth, the balloon is going to stay inflated because now you're not going to know if there is an actual leak or not. Same thing happens here. So we have to shut off the air compressor and push in the two parking brakes. What's that going to do? That's going to fill up all of the air tank, all of the air hoses and brake chambers, and we're going to see if there's a, a, hole, a, a hole or a leak inside of this balloon, right? So we have to fill up the balloon with air, which is going to be coming out of the tanks, and by na naturally speaking, the air gauge is going to drop, right? I hope I'm not losing you guys yet. That being said, air gauge is going to drop, and that's normal. Now you're going to wait one minute with the brakes released, which means both of these brakes pushed in, and you cannot lose more than 3 PSI in a Class A vehicle. If you're in a straight truck vehicle, you cannot lose more than 2 PSI, okay? Now, that's going to check the emergency side of the system, make sure that there's no leaks there. Second part of the system is going to be checking the service side of the system. So you're going to push on your foot brake. You're then going, what's going to happen there? Air, more air is going to come out of the tanks because you're going to fill up the air, the service hoses and service chambers with the foot brake itself. You're going to lose a little bit more air pressure, which is perfectly okay. And at that time, you're going to wait one minute and you cannot lose more than four PSI if you're in a class A vehicle. And you cannot lose more than three PSI in that one minute if you're in a class B vehicle. Super, super important. So again, what are we doing? We're making sure the engine is off, but the key is on. If the key is not on, that means this gauge is not going to be working, which means uh, you fail, right? So you definitely don't want to fail this test. So after that uh, second minute of waiting, now we have to make sure that, hey, if something does happen, that the warning system is going to help us out with warning. So we're going to pump on the brakes to lose air pressure because every time we lose it, we pump on the brakes, we're using more air pressure. And since the engine is still off, the air compressor is not going to go on to kick everything back in. So you're going to pump on the brakes until it gets to 60 PSI. At 60 PSI, a light and a buzzard should pop up. Now, if the light and buzzard does not pop up, that means you have an issue and your warning light and buzzer are not working. Now, why is this important? Remember what I said. If you have no air, you cannot move. So say all of a sudden you're driving down the road and you have a major air leak and it gets to 60 PSI and all of a sudden there is no warning in your dashboard and you can just start driving until the point where it gets to the next level, which is 40 to 20 PSI. Once it gets between 40 to 20 PSI, the emergency brakes are going to pop on and these parking brakes are going to pop out automatically and all your brakes lock up. So again, why is this important? If you're driving down the highway and you have a major leak and all of a sudden you're not getting warned at 60 PSI that you're losing a lot of air, it's going to drop to 40 to 20 PSI fairly quickly and all your brakes pop out, which means all your wheels lock up, you're going to skid, you might go through the windshield, and it's not going to be a pretty sight. And that's why it's super, super important to perform an air brake test every single day. Because it takes a few minutes, right? But it can save your life, and it can cause, you can find a lot of different issues when they're small, so they're very easy to fix, a little hose here, a little hose there, then when it's a super big issue, and you get caught by the DOT, and got to pay a whole lot of money. So that's going to be part number one of this training course. I hope that we were able to kind of explain things a little bit better. Of course, there is always more to learn. That's why I always have to come back for more here at the Driving Academy podcast or at the Driving Academy YouTube, uh, YouTube channel. We have our Instagram, Facebook, and we actually have a TikTok. I'm not dancing on the TikTok, not yet at least, but you definitely want to check out for more information on all of our social platforms because uh, we're here to help you out and we're here to grow the knowledge and helping a million people get on the road to freedom. Now, if you did like this and you like the way I taught, that's exactly how all of our instructors teach. We have a curriculum that's going to show you how we can guarantee that you get a CDL license, whether you're looking to get your CDL permit or whether you have your permit already and you just want to get the actual hands-on yard and road training. We have programs that are available for both different options as well. So all you got to do is visit our website at cdldrivingacademy.com. Again, that's cdldrivingacademy.com. And def definitely contact one of the locations near you. Since we are a franchise, we're growing nationwide. 
And if you want to open up your very own driving academy, give us a call there too. We have a whole page on just about franchising on our website. And we can definitely help you out, get you on the road to freedom and helping others do the same exact thing. So I hope to see you in person one day. I hope you enjoyed this and there's got a whole lot more to come here in 2023. Let's rock and roll. Thanks. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, make sure you hit that like button. Also, subscribe to our channel. It's really gonna help us out. Click on that button. And if you want to continue yourself on your road to freedom, here's more videos to watch. There's endless amounts. Hopefully we get to see each other one day very soon. Thanks.